Hello everyone. Welcome to Court with Chrissy. No, you're not seeing Guy Fieri's stunt double belling up to a dive bar. This pro se defendant has a judgment against him from his HOA from probably about a decade ago. He says he's paid. The HOA says he is not. How do you think Mr. Pro Se does when Judge Stansbury uses a mad dad voice? It's that good. Two warnings. First, Licking County Court is always live and you can't rewind. I joined when court was already in session. No big deal. Didn't miss much. And two, Judge Stansbury takes this ruling under advisement. But based on the number of shades of red that the defendant's face turns, I think it's safe to say how it's going to go. I will also post an update in the community page when it's posted online. So don't worry. I got you covered. I hope you like it. Court with Christy is now in session. Eight dollars for unpaid homeowner's session, which would include late fees, uh, notices and then the, the judge for the uh, dues. So he already got attorney's fees and uh, he then, that's page one, He this is what he got, the, the $778 comes from $500 of court cost or attorney's fees. Again, objection, your honor, okay. the amount of the judgment isn't even to be considered by the court but today. But it's going to be relevant here in a minute, Judge. I'll sustain the objection. It's not relevant, Mr. Okay. Helfrich. You cannot make it relevant. The only okay. issue is whether, A, you've paid this, uh, this, this debt in full, or B, whether it's been discharged in bankruptcy. So okay. do you have any evidence or testimony you uh, wish to present on those two yes, issues? Yes, sir, as you let go through these papers. <clears throat> so he took go number to number two. So then... I'm going to say he he owns the homeowners he owns the uh, management company, so the management company which he owns, wholly owns, then rolled this the judgment the court fees and everything into my statement of nine hundred and twenty nine dollars and sixteen cents, that then with the hundred seventy five dollar dues came up to the number at the bottom. So they rolled that in there and he's admitted to that in in another court case we have going on right now. So with that, I sent them out. This time, I said the whole number three, go to three. I sent them out an entire check. And we also had a dispute, Judge, over uh, the homeowner's association not being turned over. We were talking on the phone at this point. Again, and, Your Honor, objection. Is there something <coughs> relevant to payment or bankruptcy? Your Honor, it goes, to, it goes to, to a court of satisfaction. We have to have a dispute first. And I'm going to the R why I'm, I'm saying we had a dispute. About me establishing I don't need every little detail that's happened in this case. Get to the point where you can show me documentation that you've paid this debt. Okay. Number three. I paid, I wrote them a check, and we had a dispute over the amount in number one, and he accepted that check. Whether he now looks back at it and says, I wish I didn't, that's not my fault. He accepted the check. Uh, this time it said, annual assessments paid in full. And that's what this paper was. Objection, Your Honor. Okay. If he's going to testify to it, at least testify to what it says. It says 2010 annual assessment paid in full. This was before it was returned to you, correct? This was never returned to me. But, Honor, I'm testifying. He wants to question me later. That's fine. But this is the uh, uh, annual assessment for 2010. It says right there, 3 8, it's on number 2. 3, 8, 10, and I'm paying on the total amount that's due. And he accepted it. So now you go to number four. Uh, again, all this is rolled in, and it continues. And on, on the statement date, which is number four, on statement date of 4.10, I paid $175, and they accepted it. If you go to page number five, you go to page number five, it shows up here where the judgment was made. It says October 8th, that's when the, the judgment, not when the case, small claims was filed. And if you go down for here, 2000, we already showed I paid 2010. And their own, these, old, these are the documents they send to me and that have been produced in a, a companion lawsuit we have. Okay? Why are we talking about 2010 when the complaint itself was filed in 2008? Because they're saying that I'm, I, made pay, I made payments on this. The judgment, that's what we're talking about. I'm making payments on the judgment. Because they rolled the judgment into this statement. So I'm making payments on this judgment. It doesn't say on these checks that I'm making payment on dues. It says on this entire statement. So I made payments 
by their own admission here in 2011, 2012, 2013, and in 2014, they, as you see right here, is the first time they returned the check that said paid in full on the entire statement. So by this own paper right here, I've made four payments of $175. Now if you go to number six, this is another check that I made paid to them, and they accepted it, number six. So I made a payment again on an on a, on account that they rolled a judgment into. Now, there's nothing on this here that says I paid for the dues. It says the account. They, they rolled this judgment into an account, okay? And I made payments on that account, and they accepted it. Uh, the next one here is 2017. Uh, they sent me the check back. I voided it, so they still have my money. Number eight is another one that says, paid in full, Howard Stewart Parkway. And it has the check stuff, and, and I paid. Here's another statement from them for 2018 that they got the got some money, and they with and then they minus the amount of money. Now keep in mind, I keep saying that the very first check I gave to them, whether it was for 50 cents and they accepted it, that's their problem. There was already a dispute, so we have a court and satisfaction. Now I'm showing you that I have made payments on that $700 because it's already we've up to $1,000. Let's go to number 10. Here's another one, paid. And if you go to 11, that shows my st statement. That would, number 10 is for year 19. If you look at my bank statement, they did cash that check. So they got payment every year so far. Now you look at number 12. That's another small claims that they filed here in this court and uh, you transferred it to <clears throat> Common Police Court, not me. I never asked for that. So if you go to the second page of it, and I'm going to have him authenticated here in a minute, because it's his signature, his filing. What is he suing for? Now, we've already established they ruled the Judge Higgins's what is now $900. They turned around and ruled all that back into this other lawsuit. If you look at it, the top of it, it says association dues. You got small claims filing, that's in 2008. Annual assessment. Uh, everything that we've already talked about. They've rolled back into another complaint. So not only did they take Judge Higgins's, they're now charging me twice for it. Because Judge Higgins' statement that I've showed you here, that's in this court, doesn't say that they can charge me for legal letters uh, anything else that says you get 5%, you get court cost, and you get the $700. It doesn't say. And if you roll it into another case, or if you roll it into a statement, which they did, then you could start charging Mr. Hel okay, Helfrich. I'm, I'm going to have to object. Mr. Helfrich is not an attorney. He's rendering legal opinions on what you can or can't do based I on what I don't have to be an attorney to do that, Judge. Uh, Mr. Helfrich. I listen to you without a word until I object and I do it properly. You okay, extend the same courtesy to me. He's expressing opinions on the status of law, and he's getting himself an attorney if he actually wants to do that because he's not an expert on that. What the judge said was simply confirmation of law, what we got the judgment for. Your Honor, it doesn't mean you can't charge later when you continue not to pay subject to deed restrictions that provide for it. The court isn't addressing those issues. The judgment was made, entered into, in 2008. Nothing has been presented to you so far that shows payment that was made that was not directed to later uh, things that weren't returned, that weren't the subject of letters telling him. There's no dispute. There's no accord and satisfaction without a dispute. And to hear him render legal opinions at the same time, it's just unacceptable. Well, My response? No. I'm going to overrule the objection. He's allowed to make his arguments, but let's face it. The court's going to be the one that makes the legal judgment, okay? So you may continue, okay. Mr. Helfrich. So now, he, the one that has all the knowledge here, took and filed a, another complaint, which you sent, sent to Common Police Court, and not only did he roll as a, we were establishing papers with signature on, that not only did he roll this Judge Higgins' gent into 
my statements, and I made payments on those statements, which now has is gone well over $1,000. So I have paid this off. Because then he turns around and, and goes after me in court for all of these uh, uh, dues. And not only does he go after me for dues, he goes after me for the entire statement. And then he adds in, as you can see here, oh, he's going to charge me again for small claims fee. Judge Higgins already did that. Small claims preparation. Judge, he already paid for that, but he's going to sue me again for it. So he's collection twice on this stuff. If you go down through here, Judge, he puts in everything that's owed in this second complaint he files. He did, one with all the knowledge. So then he brings it over to, if you send it to common police court, I didn't object, I let it go. The judge continued to say, make it, tell him to pay the, the fees over there. He told the judge, oh no, I'm not going to do that because Mr. Helvich had it transferred. I never did. Again, he makes a lot of statements in courts and in documents that he just wings off whatever he wants to do. If Let's get I back to that, the point, Mr. Helvich. Let's go back to the point. That case, which now includes everything that could possibly be owed, clear back to the beginning when I purchased his home, he puts it into the second case. If you go to number 13, are you going through this thing? It gets dismissed. And then... He files a 60B motion like four months later, all the knowledge. And I said, no, you can't do that. Your Honor, if it will save time, we will stipulate that the case after being transferred to the Court of Common Pleas with no notice of who was responsible for paying was ultimately uh, dismissed on procedural grounds oh. with no testimony, no evidence submitted on procedural grounds, but I will stipulate. It well, was, and I believe there's a copy of the Court of Appeals decision attached um, to the documents that Mr. Helfrich is referencing yes, right, right now, we, we, which we the agree. courts had an opportunity to review that, and, and I agree. It's not necessary to go all the way through that. Thank okay. you. So then I, I did put it in here. So that's on the next page here, Judge. I put in the, that's number 11. The Court of Appeals said, no, that case is over with. You're lost. He that's just stipulated to all okay. that. We don't need to get into okay. it. Okay. So we're going through the pages. Go to 15. Again, I made a payment. That payment was cashed. If you go to the number 16, it's been cashed. So, Your Honor, I have showed that over more than 11 times in this document, which he's not going to be able to deny, and I've showed that they've been cashed. They accepted these checks. The checks didn't say for dues, they said for the account. Now, given that if you go to number 2, the money, which he is a group of, I think he's admitted to it, the $929.16 is everything I owed in this judgment. Everything I owed in this judgment. That went in first. My testimony is I'm paying on a statement, not for dues. So I, so, if, so is he going to prove now that, oh, those went to the other? No, he can't prove that now because when he sued me, in okay, 2010, Mr. Helfrich, you said about 10 different times, I'm paying on an account, not on dues. I got that. Okay. That's okay. your argument. So, so Let's wrap it up. Okay. I am wrapping it up, but I kind of get tired of his, his, his demeaning me because I'm not an attorney. You don't have to be an attorney to be in this courtroom. He only does attorney just allows him to represent other people. Take the chip off your shoulder for a minute, and let's get back to business, Well, all right? you get accused of stuff, and get, you get tired of it. Really? You never, you I wouldn't know anything about me. getting accused of stuff. I can't hear you, Judge. I said I wouldn't know about getting accused of stuff. So I, I, can't, I can't identify, but you can proceed, please. I've been accused of a lot, a lot. Generally, when I accuse people back, it's based on good reference. And any time that is judged, you can always challenge me on it. I'd like to challenge you to complete presenting your argument, please. Okay. So, um, I'm wrapping it up that in my closing on my thing is that my documents here show that he put it in. He accepted a check for accord and satisfaction, whether it's for whether he chooses now not. Mr. Helfrich, now you've said this eleven times. Okay, but I'm Do doing my closing. New. I didn't. I, well, I thought we was doing closing arguments for my case. All you're doing is testifying. We haven't even given the plaintiff an opportunity to be heard yet. Okay. Do you have any uh, other testimony you want to add? No, other than testifying that every one of these documents are true and accurate. The best 
recollection, and I've done it based on the documents that they provided to me in a lawsuit that's currently pending, and the ones I have at home. Are you seeking to admit these documents into evidence? Yes, just uh, what I call number one. Any objection, Mr. Uh, Dye? Subject to the court's ability to recognize and interpret what they are, no objection to their admission, Your Honor. Yeah, based upon the testimony provided by Mr. Helfrich uh, to give context to the documents, I will go ahead and grant the motion to um, admit plaintiff's or defendant's exhibit one. Um, do you wish to cross-examine the defendant? Or, okay. Briefly, Very well. Uh, Mr. Helfrich, going back to your exhibit uh, one, page three. One page three. Uh, give me a second. Yeah, your exhibit. Go ahead. Page three. Yes. Uh, that check tendered on March 11, 2010 for $175. That says it was paid for 2010 annual assessment, correct? Yes. Thank you. Uh, when you refer on page five, uh, but doubling back to page four with a second reference in 2010, you only issued one check in 2010, right? You just. Go ahead. You, you only asked. Let me ask the first question before we go on. In 2010, the number number four represents that I paid in ten. Now that you took the money, number three. No, you're not answering the question. The question okay, is, you ahead. only made one payment in 2010. Correct. correct. Yes. Okay. And that giving you the benefit of doubt that even though it says that it's for 2010's dues, it's a payment on the judgment. The judgment was not 175 dollars, was it? No, but it I'm was far payments. more than 175. That's wasn't correct. It? Okay. So, in fact, the charging of a late fee because you didn't pay the account in full was justified and appropriate. Well, the judge didn't say you could. So, charge no dispute. Um, going the to doesn't say you can charge a late fee. Going to your exhibit five, okay. you show payments in uh, 2012 and 2013 for 175 dollars right. each, uh, but you don't have copies of those checks. Why not? Well. Because your own statements that you provided to me shows I, I have them, and once I got to that far, I didn't ask the bank to go back because I have established them in a paper that you admit that I paid them. But I testified that I paid them here. So I we're testified to that. So, so I we, did we are, make a payment, and these. So we are left to believe that, in spite of your other checks saying what year they're for, that, that these two didn't say 2011 dues account paid in full, 2013 dues account paid in full, just because you are saying so? No, because I've testified that every check I write to, to the HOA says the same thing. Because I'm saying this is because the reason the, the small claims case in the first one didn't buy into it, didn't accept it, is because on that check I wrote dues paid in full instead of account paid in full. That's why you Did someone that tell case. you that it was returned because it said dues instead of account? I don't understand your question. Well, you just said that you didn't accept the other one back because the mistake of 2010 was that it says dues paid in, in full, so it was returned. You're, you're confused but the, the latest ones say account, and you say all your checks say the same thing. They all, but they all two of them here don't. The only two I've looked at don't say the same thing. Okay, which one two are you talking about? Well, page three and page ten. Okay. Page one says three. 2010 annual assessment paid. The one on page ten doesn't say that. So you do say different things one on second. different checks. One says paid in full, and there's a number, the account number. So whether I say dues paid in full or account paid in full, it's the same thing. Whether we say statement paid in full, account paid in full, it's saying the same thing. Okay, I understand your position on that. Okay. Referring back to the one you did in 2010 that does say that it was the 2010 dues, therefore not part of the, the payment of the judgment. We're going to number 10. Your page 3. Wait, says, I'm on page 10. Your page 3 oh. says it was payment of 2010, so that was not payment toward the judgment. So that one's out. Wait a minute. In, no, wait, stop. Number 3. Page 3. Page 3. Your exhibit, it's a copy of a check, says 2010 annual assessment. And 
that's number two. Yes, that's well, it's for your page three. I and I don't care what number you're using in your mind. Number you're three. showing it on page three. Number Just three. if the court can step in for a moment, Mr. Dyer, are you talking about this photocopy of check number three 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 eight? Yes, Your Honor. All right. Do you know what we're talking about now, yes, Mr. Sir, Helfrich? That's on, that's on my number three. That is paying for the statement of three eight ten. You you sent me a bill on three eight. 2010. Mr. Helfer, it's just not your turn to, to testify to whatever you want. I asked you a question. I'm trying to clarify. Your I, I don't need your clarification. You answer my questions and you'll get a chance again. I believe the court will give you that. I am entitled to ask the question. Go this ahead. question is question, for your acknowledgement that the check number 3338, shown on page 3 of your exhibit, Correct. was paid for 2010. No, it was paid for a statement of 2010. Then why doesn't it say 2010 statement instead of saying 2010 annual assessment? Because this thing is called an annual state uh, assessment. I'm almost certain it is. Which one? The 2010 annual Correct. assessment. We'll move on. The court can figure out what that means. Well, you, you made a payment again in of $175 in 2012 and again in 2013. Those two combined are $350. Is three hundred and fifty dollars equal to or less than over seven hundred dollars? Well, it's it's less, but you only took two of the years. You didn't take three or four or five of the years. Uh, so I, 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 I'll get to, I'll get to my questions when I get to them. Okay. Thank you for you anticipating. Don't have, you don't have to get mad at me. I'm not mad at you. You I'm, are getting rattled. Let's just go ahead and take you a step back. You asked about two I'll, years, and you asked hey, what the math was, and I told stop, you half. Stop. Make it. Listen to his question. Go ahead. Answer it. Go ahead. If you're going to be evasive. Then I'm going to end up having to strike all of your testimony. Please Thank continue. You, Your Honor. When you made a payment in 2014, did you receive a responsive communication from my office? For, what number is this? Oh, it's not it. It wouldn't be in your list. It's oh. mine. Would it be this one right here? Uh, no, that's the next one. There's one dated March 10 of 2014, in oh. which in which I told you that your check was being returned and that if you actually believe there's a dispute, which you have to have for an accord and satisfaction, and as the statute provides, I had the right to demand that you notify me by writing at my address that you were attempting to accomplish an accord and satisfaction. Did you ever send such a separate communication to me saying, I am enclosing a check for $160 as an accord and satisfaction for the entire balance that you show that I owe? Well, are you talking about have I ever done that? Have you ever sent a communication saying to me at my address as notified in three different letters that I sent to you in three different years that said, if you wish to effect a, an accord and satisfaction, send me a writing that says that's what you're doing to my address. Have you ever done that? Well, in those... It's that, a yes or no question, Mr. Helfrich. Have you ever done it? I'm going to answer no because he asked specific you, words. You answer, answer the Thank question. Thank you. That's, that's okay, all I, I need to know. Question. I notified you of that fact in March of 2014, April of 2015, and again in February of 2020 when you continued to send payments. How did you send those payments? By mail. Uh, you mean electronically online so that they oh. bypass the mail? No, I auto no, I've never transferred anything electronic in my life, so I oh. can answer that. Okay. Well the evidence certainly suggests otherwise, but in any event, well, well, even if that was accurate, you never sent a letter to me saying you were tendering it as an accord and satisfaction. Correct? Well Mr. Dye, that's already been asked and answered. He said no. I'm sorry. Uh, with respect to the judgment itself, Mr. Helfrich, your testimony is that there was an accord and satisfaction because there was a dispute. Correct. Okay. What dispute continued to exist after a judgment was rendered against you which was confirmed at the Court of Appeals? Okay. What were you disputing about the amount of the judgment? Okay. What I'm disputing, I didn't dispute the judgment. Thank you. I did not dispute the judgment. Thank you. That's all I needed to know. Okay. Uh, how many different let nah, nah, strike that? Um, I have no further questions for Mr. Helfrich. Right. So, Mr. Helfrich, uh, you have the right uh, to provide what's called, um, well, redirect testimony to address the questions that were asked by Mr. Dye. What would you like to say, if yes, anything? Sure. 
Uh, he's made some statements here that aren't, aren't, aren't true, but he's not under oath on this. Uh, I, Your Honor, I guarantee I've never electronically sent any check ever in my life to anybody because I don't have the aptitude to do it. I've had my wife do things like this for me or my kids, but I've never. So every payment ever made to this company was always made by personal check to the company, one. Two, he's asked if I ever sent something to him because he keeps saying that he, he needs to send something to his office because he sent me a letter, I don't know, in 2014 or 15. My document in number three, the first accord of satisfaction, was sent in 2010. He never argues he sent me any notice other than 1415 about doing that. So this check was sent four years before he ever notified me to do it. So that's his problem. The next thing is, is there is a dispute because I've tried to write it home a hundred times here. He has taken to his benefit and taken a, a case, rolled it in to a statement, and then since his statement isn't paid in full, he then starts collecting, as I showed you in another document, $75 for legal fees, or legal letters. And it's all in here. He hasn't denied it. Objection, Your Honor. This is just a rerun of what he already testified to that I didn't ask him anything about. Yeah, you have to be responsive to the questions that you were asked by Mr. Dye. You can't go okay, back yep, into okay. that. Well, he also made statements in there, too, not questions. He made a lot of statements about me. Any statements that he made are not considered evidence by the okay. court. Okay, so he never... I've never sent any letter from him saying that send it to me directly with certain words. I don't have to use certain words. The check itself speaks for itself. And the, and the dispute, again, since he questioned it, the dispute is like I've been trying to say all along. The dispute is you took something and you moved it into another, case, into another thing, another avenue, so then you could turn around and charge me more money up and above here. We have a dispute. Whether the dispute is this small or this small is a dispute. And that's all I have to have. But, Your Honor, uh, to answer any other questions he has about this, I'm going to now provide another document to you and put it in. One second. I only have two, so how are we going to handle this? Well, I'll tell you what. I'll, I'll give him. Hold on. Marcus one two. Yeah, no, I asked to see what he's about to. I'm gonna. Yeah. Move Go ahead and publish it. Hand. This Marcus one two. Ah, right, you get this. Two. I need a judge. Can you write two on there? I forgot to put it on there. The record will reflect that the court is affixing uh, the number two to this exhibit. He wrote two on it now. Your Honor, his whole argument is, well, you know, Jim, somehow you electronically transferred something or you did something. No, I didn't do that. I never did. But if you look at this check dated 3-11-10, and you look at the certif... And, I, and, Your Honor, I'm trying to hold on to the original, but I'd like to show it to you. Here's the original. You look at the original certified copy, this thing. Your Honor, I, I'm... It's, does it match it? I'm going to object to the reference to this, Your Honor. I haven't seen it yet, so I need you know, to I see understand. it. That's the original. I'd like to hold on to the original judge. We're going to have another case have it on, but I'm letting you look at it. These are the same documents we're already talking about. Well, I'll, I'll give him some leeway to see where this is going, but sure. let's get there. But he, he's kind of saying, what he's going to head to here in a little bit is, well, I snuck around the corner and I didn't send him any notice about this check, so he didn't know anything about it, so he, he doesn't. Look at this, Your Honor. It's, it's sent right to his address, which he, and I'm going to mark this here. I'm going to mark this exhibit. Uh, three. Here. There. Your Honor, I'm going fast as I can. Now he's going to hit in this thing and saying, well, I didn't do what his instructions were five years later. There's his instructions to send anything we have a problem with to him. 
that address. And I did that before he even instructed me to do it. And if you look at the dates on this certificate of mailing, it is the exact same date of my check, which I sent to him. Now, I don't need to have certain words. Him and I are on the phone all the time. I don't need certain words to explain to him what this is and what you need to do. The check itself speaks for itself. So I had a dispute. He accepted it whether he wanted to or he thinks back now he said he didn't want to. And I don't want to go to my closing statement, but I've already got, I've told you four things why you can't, and this thing's been done. All right, so Mr. Dye, any recross? Uh, very briefly, Your Honor. Um, the certificate of mailing you're showing that something was sent in March of 2010. Um, we know that that attaches to the check that was sent because you're saying so. Well, it's not on the same, same date. Sure. The, the ledger acknowledges the receipt of a payment in 2010, shown right there. You got yep. credit for the payment, correct? Yep, you cashed it. Um, so the you point, of, it. Mr. Helfrich, please. The point of you saying that you mailed it certified when we acknowledge it was received and credited is somehow connected to a 2015 letter. How? 2016 letter, what are you talking about? Well, you just gave the judge a separate copy of my letter in 2015 saying that any payment you wish to tender as an offer of compromise on the amount you owe must be mailed to P.O. Box 395, Grove City, Ohio, to the attention of David Dye. That's the, that's the instruction, correct? You just gave the letter to the court. It's to, it's to you. Correct. And, and, these... and does your certified mail point out that it is to the attention of David Dye? No. And is it, it five years before the issue of whether or not there was a, a, a dispute for an offer and compromise even arise? <coughs> was 2010 five years before 2015? I'll stand without an answer, Your Honor. The, it's yeah, obvious. I've got an answer to it if you could let me answer instead of trying to. Well, it's yes or no. Was 2015 five years later than 2010? Your Honor. Mr. Helfrich, you just promised to answer the question. Please go ahead so he can continue with his questioning. Okay. Whether this letter... The question was whether or not 2015 was five years later than 2010. Yes, it is. Thank, Thank you. you very much. You may continue, Mr. Dye. That was also uh, two months before the 2010 uh, decision by the Court of Appeals finding that your argument that there had been an accord and satisfaction failed. Isn't that correct? That's correct, but a judgment's owed when it's... There's no but. Decided, Correct. not when the appeals court does. So, so it's immaterial because you're I have no further questions for Mr. Helfrich, Your Honor. All right. Mr. Helfrich, did you have any additional witnesses other than yourself that you wish to call? No, sir. Did you wish to offer two and three into, into evidence? It should be two, three, and I think we have four, don't we, Judge? I just have two and three. Um, oh. Any objection to well, two and three coming in, Mr. Dye? Uh, no, Your Honor. All right. Those will be admitted uh, upon the defendant's motion. Um, all right. So, you have no further witnesses. You addressed all your exhibits. Mr. Dye, do you wish to call any witnesses on behalf of the plaintiff? Just one briefly, Your Honor. All right, sir. We'll go ahead and have you yes, take sir. the stand. <clears throat> Robert Wyckoff, W Y C as in Charlie O F F as in Frank. What's your business address? Your business address? Business address PO Box 395, uh, Grove City, Ohio. Thank you. All right. Thank you. You may inquire. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, Bobby, remember you've been sworn. Uh, can you tell the court uh, what you do for a living? Yep, I'm a vice president of Omni. And in that capacity, are you a person having care, custody, and control of the business records for the Hazelwood Homeowners Association? I am. I may approach earlier. You may. Do I get a copy of it? You know what? I'm going to have to ask for, for a copy to be made. Uh, it's the ledger you've got several copies of. Well, which one is this like? I, I, I was courteous enough to give you a copy so you could help. Okay. Let's go ahead and make a quick photocopy of Thank that. You. Actually make two. Thank you. Do you have any other things you're going to have so you can do it all at the same time? Thank you for your instruction.
actually, yeah, you can give this one back to Mr. Oh, does he have the original? No, I, I, the I, original. I don't need to have it in front of me for my purposes. Okay. Your Honor. You may proceed, Mr. Dye. <clears throat> Mr. Wyckoff, can you identify that document? It's a ledger for Mr. Hilfert's It's address. a standard ledger that the association would keep in its ordinary course of business for the amounts that an individual may owe at a given point in time. Yes, sir. I'm mainly interested in reference to uh, three different items on the ledger. Uh, they are distinguishable from the others by the fact that there is a column with nothing else in them except for series of numbers at three different locations. Can you tell the court what those numbers, what they mean, the presence of those numbers, what does that mean? They reference an electronic number. And it, reading the, each of those lines from left to right, are they attached to any specific type of a transaction? For example, a charge or a payment, whatever they are. Yeah, payments for, yeah, payments, lockbox payments on the account. Okay, and then you say lockbox, so electronic payment? Electronic payment received at the bank. Done online? Oh, done online. Uh, and what are the dates of those payments? The first one appears to be 1-30-2017. The second one appears to be 1-8-2018. The third being 1-31-2019. Okay, so at least three of the payments that uh, were tendered uh, were sent electronically? Yes, sir. Uh, and do you know uh, of your own knowledge whether or not uh, those payments were retained by the association or refunded to Mr. Helfrich? No, I do not. They appear to be um, on the account and credited to the account. Okay. Um, the uh, form of the ledger itself, you, you've testified that's fairly standard, uh, correct? Yeah. And how many ledgers does the association keep for any individual's account? Every account has one ledger. Every account has one ledger. So if, hypothetically, uh, an individual were to not pay a bill for close to 20 years, there would still be only one ledger? One ledger. Okay. Um, is a, an alternative ledger ever prepared uh, by the association? No. Okay. And is the ledger ever updated and used for different purposes at different times. The letters could change every day. Uh, you're aware of the allegations in this case that the association filed a separate suit in 2019 or 2020, uh, secondary to the judgment that was taken back in 2008. Would that, by definition, still be the same ledger? The ledger should be the same. And at the time that the association uh, transfers an account for judgment, what does it give the law office for use in the filing of the claim? Um, I'm sorry. What does the uh, the association through Omni provide to the attorney for use in filing a claim? A ledger. So by definition, ledger for a 2020 filing would reflect if any payments had been made as far back as the account existed. Sure. Yep. Um, from an evidentiary standpoint. Is the association ever asked, after a case has been filed, to update a ledger? Sure. And what does the updated ledger show? It would show any new payments or fees or transactions that happened on the account. It could change daily. Meaning back to the date that the complaint was filed? Your Honor. Yeah. Basis? Okay. My basis is where they're going with this thing is this. So since they have a ledger, uh, this is what they go by. Uh, I think where they're going to go to this is the, the second lawsuit that was filed. Well, this is a ledger, and uh, where I think they're going with this is this is a ledger, and since we don't really, uh, this is the way it prints out, uh, you know, that's just the way it is. The bottom okay, line is this, is subject, this is a subject for cross-examination, not an objection. So I'll overrule the objection. You may okay. continue, Mr. Dye. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, in that context, uh, Mr. Wyckoff, when suit is filed with the um, attachment of a ledger, uh, are any adjustments made for the question of the fact of whether or not some of the balance shown on the ledger may already be secured? Um, would it show if we secured the, the amount? On the ledger? Sure. The amount would show? Yeah. Is there any distinction to show that it was previously the subject of a different lawsuit? No. It's just math? Just, yeah, just math. I have nothing further for Mr. Wyckoff, Your Honor. All right. Mr. Helfrich, you have any questions for sure. Mr. Wyckoff? I, I'm a little bit confused on this, and I'm not an electronic guy, not a computer guy at all. Nothing. I've got a flip phone, business cards. I, I'm confused. You're, you're claiming that somehow three times I I sent some electronically, right? 
And how would I have had it done? And I really don't know because I've never done it. Before. This would be a payment made online. Okay, so wouldn't it be that the banks transfer this online? I'm not sure I understand your question. Well, isn't it possible that, okay, where's that documents judge I gave to you? I think you have to give it to him for me to ask questions. I don't know what you're talking form. about. He would be. The, 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 this one here, because i got to ask him questions about it. Mr. Whitehouse? Okay, thank you. Let's go to, there's a number eight at the top. We go back through there, there's number eight. Okay. Okay. And it was my testimony that this is the check that I wrote to your company. Okay. Okay. And how is this electronically transferred? I don't know. How is what? Uh, if I sent you this and you, you admit you got it, right? This check. Do we admit that we got your check on? Of number number eight. Just number eight. See this number eight. Look at number sure. eight. Sure. Check okay. two seven eight one. Yes, sir. And go to the next page, back number nine. Okay. You admit you got that based on this. The minus and the hundred and sixty dollars, right? Based on the next statement, it does appear that it reflects a hundred and sixty dollar payment, referencing check two seven eight one. Okay. So, what relevance does it have whether it's been electronically transferred or not? That was my question. What, why are we talking about how it was, how oh, payments were made? Your, your Honor, it, it just goes to the credibility of Mr. Helfrich, who said he always does everything a certain way. He's never done anything. Wife might have, but he doesn't. It, it is offered purely for the fact that the man's not reliable, in my opinion. Well, how can I be uh, not the reliable? The court will make that determination, but. Do you have any additional questions about this, the electronic okay, so payments? It, it, are you, you said you were familiar with the lawsuit filed in uh, 2000, I believe, uh, 2020, correct? Um, not, in what, in what, to, to what extent, I guess? Uh, I thought he asked you if you were familiar with another lawsuit filed. That's familiar. Uh, you have he was lawsuit. aware of it. Aware of it. Aware. Okay. If you go to one that's not number 12, correct? Okay. Now, you said that this Exhibit D, the one you, you talked about up here, is all the money that I owed, correct? Just a ledger, yep. And so that this is a ledger that shows everything possibly I owed, right? As of the date that it was printed. Okay. And is that the same ledger or paper that's on the second page of number 12? Um, without cross-referencing. Well, I, think I want you to take a look at it. I want you to look at it real good. Here, yeah, we'll stipulate they're the same thing. All right. Save time. So, <laughs> number 12 is everything that's owed, correct? As of the date that it was printed. Okay. Go to number, go to document number 2. One says number 2. In that same paper. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> The nine hundred and twenty-nine dollars and sixteen cents. Are you familiar at all with that came from? It appears to be a forwarded balance. A balance, and I think we've already established that balance came from a judgment. Correct. I don't know. I believe we did. No one's testified other than that. No so two. All, all of that is 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 in this. Correct. Um, it appears to be. Okay. Good enough. Uh, are you denying that it, uh, that I made any other payments? Oh, well, let's go through these one at a time. Mm, no, we're not okay. going to go through them. Okay, I already testified this out. I have no more questions, Judge. Any redirect? No, Your Honor. Mr. Wyckoff, you may step down and I'll take that back, please. Yes. Any additional witnesses on behalf of the... Uh, on behalf of the uh, defendant, or plaintiff, I'm sorry. No, Your Honor, we would request admission of the uh, documents that were referred to in testimony. Exhibit D, you already have a copy of. Gosh, Exhibits yeah. A and B, you've shown me you've got copies of. Hold They're on. the March 14 and April 15 letters from me. One second, Judge. 
I don't think no, we talked about the February letter. We've rested this case and we talked about a letter from 2015, but not for 2014. It never came in. I would object to the one from 2014 coming in. We know what he talked about. I'll sustain the objection to, as to 14. There wasn't a foundation for it, but uh, the, uh, defendant, or the defendant is not objecting to the letter from 2015, and that's Exhibit B. So. 2014 letter. Just for clarification, I thought we had four exhibits. We only have three. Uh, and then let's see here. Do you have an exhibit C? It was given to you. Uh, an exhibit C. Yeah, no, I had one marked as exhibit but you didn't offer it. No. You're not offering it. Not offering Okay. Any objection to plaintiff's D coming in, Mr. Helfer? Or, yeah, that's the, the ledger that was testified to. Oh, no, Your Honor. All no, right. That'll no, be admitted no, to, so without that objection. That helps me, Judge. All right. Okay, very well. Uh, the court's going to take the matter under advisement. and uh, Your Honor, I was expecting that we'd at least have the opportunity to summarize what the evidence collectively meant. Briefly, by all means. If we may. By all means. Uh, well, it's his burden, so he gets first. to go first. So, yes. Mr. Uh, Helfrich, do you want to make a closing argument here before uh, we uh, uh, recess? Okay. Sure, Your Honor. Again, uh, uh, to, 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 to allow this to go forward, I'll still argue again. The uh, document from Common Police Court, unless it's certified to this court, can't be judged, can't be taken. Any documents that were done for uh, assessments or liens on my property never identified this case, so therefore they don't, they're not warranted to extend any life or any time. Then I've showed up and I've testified, no one has testified it against it. And I provided that there was a dispute. And I provided a check and sent it straight to the Hazelwood HOA. And it was cash. No one said it was not. I provided testimony and checks here of a number of checks that I have sent to uh, the, I'm going to call it the HOA or this group. And that adds up to well more than over the last 20 years, well more than $177. And then their own admissions is that everything I ever owed them, and they've, we've testified that that judgment was rolled in to another deal, everything I ever owed them, it, it was attached to a second complaint, and they lost that complaint. So it's done, Judge. Four reasons this thing can't go forward. All right. Thank you, Mr. Helfrich. Mr. Dye. Thank you, Your Honor. Contrary to uh, Mr. Helfrich's characterization of what was testified to, let's talk about the facts. Documents that he says have to be attached to a certified copy, you've got notice of in your own, doc in your own docket. Uh, this later claim, it doesn't prove payment, it doesn't prove anything. There was no evidence taken. It was discharged on procedural grounds. The testimony that was before you was that there was a ledger attached because there is only one ledger. That ledger would have been the foundation for additional testimony at hearing if it had ever come to be a hearing, but it included amounts that were already the subject of a prior judgment just mathematically. That would have had to have been set aside in terms of the rendering of the judgment because you can't take a judgment twice on the same dollars. No one intended, anticipated, or tried to. It just happens to be there's only one ledger. Which is the, the important, Mr. Helfrich? I don't believe he interrupted you when you were making your argument. So please comport yourself appropriately. You may continue. On the uh, allegation of um, accord and satisfaction, he acknowledged in open court. No, I do not dispute what came out of the judgment. That's the only accord and satisfaction that could have taken place, which relates to his claim of the payments. He acknowledges payment returned to him that still stays on my account because I chose not to cash the check. Funds were returned to him. Letters were sent to him as evidence in the case that if he wanted to effect us an accord and satisfaction, he had to notify us in writing that that's what he was doing. It wasn't just sending the correct, sending an amount to an address. He had to notify us that this is a disputed amount, which it never was. And when they received electronically, there's no way not to receive them, which is why we sent checks back to him, which if he chose not to cash them is his business. There was no accord and satisfaction. There's been no testimony that there's been any bankruptcy. There's been no payment or other legal means by which the judgment from 2008 remained valid and unsatisfied. Even the dollar amounts that he claims he paid 
prior to the ones that were credited to the later current years, per his instructions, didn't amount to enough to pay it off. The judgment needs to be reinstated, revived technically, uh, and then further hearings I regret will probably have to take place over the dollar amount that is still due and owing, but the actual reviver of the judgment is just a simple matter of compliance with the statute. All right. Thank you, Mr. Thank Dye. Thank you, Your Honor. Court will endeavor to get a, a decision out as quickly as possible. Copies will be sent to uh, Thank you. the parties. No. Okay. Which stands in recess. All right. Thank you.